Welcome back, fellow knights! What's up, guys? It's Apollo here, and we are back with another Medieval 2 Siege Battle. But this one's gonna be a special one, because today, joining me in a co-commentary is the Ryan King. And he's literally, 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 right by my side. He's, he's actually coming by visiting, so it's actually kind of cool to do a video like this. But, uh, yeah, welcome, Ryan King. Hey, what's up? Number one night here. Uh, oh, you gotta get close. Yeah, I gotta get close to the, to the microphone. Yeah, so we're using one mic, and it's just kind of awkward. So the sound might be a little weird. I might sound far away, or you might sound far away, but we're gonna do the best we can. Yeah, I feel like I have to scream into yeah. the mic. <laughs> scream! Um, so yeah, we've got a uh, a three versus two fortress battle, which it looks like it's a uh, what is this Middle Eastern? Yeah, def. Look at those. Look at those. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. There's like a mosque. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. So yeah, uh, very cool. I love the two layer fortress. Let's go ahead and look at the armies here. So one of our personal favorites, going with the f the Kingdom of France here, commanded by Urkimus. Urkimus? Er, 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 yeah, so yeah, he's bringing a lot of uh, looks like good feudal knights, chivalric knights. He's also bringing uh, something that we don't see. Knights. Yeah, noble knights, which is great for like anti-cav. Yeah, they can also like are they're pretty useful or like against infantry. They're the secret versatile unit. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of people know that. Oh, well, actually, a lot of people. Okay, and then we've got French archers, <laughs> dismounted French archers, which is another unit you don't see too often, but they're they're pretty good. Yeah, they look super medieval too. Yeah, a lot of people get like you know Scots guard and stuff. Yeah. So over here we have um the Turks commanded by Arkin, and some reason this the zooming in is not working. There we go. <laughs> He's he's bringing an interesting army. Oh, uh, whoa! Yeah. Interesting, interesting choice of words there. <laughs> yeah, so that's a little inside joke we have where we once hosted a tournament, like a medieval two tournament, and our commentary. I think it's still up, but the videos, if you watch them, we use the word interesting uh, like a hundred times really per battle. Play here. It's wow! Really interesting to see what happens here. Yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. So yeah, he's got dismounted Scipio Scipio lancers. Some Azabs. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of... Looks like a mix of spears and archers. And, of course, his artillery, which is the Grand Bombard. Grand Bombard. And then way over here, an odd ally of the French, we have the English, commanded but, by but Jason you know, Coop. The Turks, that's totally normal. Yeah, the Turks, you know, yeah. I don't know, there's something... There's more of a rival between France and England, so it stands out more. So maybe that's why, but... Red versus blue. Yeah, he's bringing some armored sergeants. Now, I don't know the money for today's battle, but in most cases, armored sergeants are not that well, great. We're seeing a lot of spears, so it doesn't really look like they have that much money. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like the low funds. It makes it more interesting and more strategical. Uh, but yeah, he's got the retinue longbows. He's got some great feudal knights and, and whatnot. Uh, here's his knight's hospitaller, which has his general in it. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the attacking armies now. We also have another weird alliance, which is the Byzantine Empire, the boys in purple. Classic. Yeah, commanded by em uh, Adventurer uh, 20, or 32. Uh, and then he has his Egyptian ally, which is I Irish Einer? I'm not sure. Yeah. I Ishaner? Ishaner? I have no So clue. yeah, he's, he's going with the... Uh, the Egyptians, so we can go ahead and play here. We got another historic alliance. Yeah, historic. You guys, when the Egyptians showed up to aid the Byzantine Empire against the French Turkish alliance mixed in with English. English. Yeah. 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 So it's not historical, but that's why we like Total War because it's, you can do. You can make dreams come true. If you make dreams. If this is your dream, I, okay, well. Yeah. It's a weird dream. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the French are actually, they don't have any artillery, so they're going to be going straight for the walls. And I appreciate that. How often how often do you see where you have artillery options? Yeah. You know, someone who just goes balls to the literal walls. Literal, literal walls. With a bunch of different towers, and he's got a ram there. It looks awesome. It's very cinematic. That's why I like, I even like doing no artillery rules, even for a fortress. And you just give the attackers way more money. Because it makes for like really interesting wall battles and street battles, and it it just feels more like a it feels more know. authentic. Yeah, exactly. This is the kind of stuff we picture when we think of a siege. Right, when you think of scaling the walls. 
Yeah, like Kingdom of Heaven Siege, you know, they did such a good job of like showing what a siege looks like. I mean, it's all like, the movie's like crap historically, but you know, it, it looks great. Yeah, exactly. I love how often that comes up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like every time. Kingdom of Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this defense over here against the uh, Byzantine, or I'm sorry, the French kingdom is pretty light, it looks like. Yeah, the, actually extremely light. There's one unit of archers, and now the yeah, French. Yeah, and you see French knights going up on a wall with archers. They're just going to kind of stop at that. <laughs> They're going to eat them like little croissants, you know? Yeah, tasty. Tasty. Buttered up croissants. Mm. So yeah, nothing really holding up here, which is not good because... Sorry, Nubian. <laughs> you noob. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be able to set up archers up here, set up a nice little uh, foothold against the defenders. But the defenders, it seems like they don't really they don't really care too much to, to hold that wall. Yeah, especially on such an aggressive play. Yeah. I either move or hang out, I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're definitely more more inclined or more in tune here of defending <laughs> and to, uh, defending against the Turks. It's probably the Byzantines. They're just like, you know what? Out of all these guys, the Turks, we hate them the most. You know, yeah, we're, you know we're willing to join the hands of Egyptians yeah, take on the Turks. Yeah. Egyptian mercenaries. Yeah, bizarre. Bizarre, but uh, this should make for a fun, a fun battle, though. Yeah, for sure. So far, it's pretty good. And then if we look at the English, they are they're also not relying on an artillery. He, he well, actually, it. no. He yeah, has, he has the bombard. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He's, he's doing some mix in action. He's keeping his opponent off balance by keeping his options open here. Yeah, yeah. That's another good combo. I love when people are really aggressive with artillery so they can bring down walls, scale the walls. And it gives you a lot more options, it seems like. Yeah, and options in a strategy game. I mean, I don't know about you, but it seems like a good thing to have, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially in a siege where... Sieges, for me, are... Especially in Medieval 2, are much better than pitch battles. Um, I think it's because it's more of like a chess game. You know? It is. I feel like more units are able to be utilized to their potential, too, here. Right, it's right. It's less about cav more about trying to get the most out of everything right a battle of attrition and it, it, and i say it's like chess because you see what your opponent is doing but yet you still have to beat them you still have to like pull them into a trap and uh take out their forces there's uh, just more options for back and forth like yeah that. yeah absolutely so the turks are they finally put a breach into the walls they've got the siege towers now moving up which looks really cool um, and finally, the English have opened the gates, but the French have already have taken pretty much that, that main entry point. Yeah, the French are acting as a spearhead here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you got the two side armies sort of squeezing in. Yeah, yeah. Now, I usually, I used to say, like, all the time I say this in my videos, but you gotta, every, all the attackers need to attack together. But in this case, there are special scenarios where this defense is so light. He should be going in right away, even without his allies, because it's putting pressure on this huge blob that it's trying to hold against the Turks. Exactly. Now he has such a foothold in there that it's a huge threat. And now when they choose to make their move, well, they're thinking about a million different things instead of just one or two. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So the Egyptians are really holding with quite a lot here. Definitely not light on the defense. Um, and they're mostly taking on, it looks like, Armored Sergeants, so it shouldn't be too bad of a challenge. Um, but I still think England... Well, it's, it's excellent to see him not blob up, too, right here. They're not throwing everything, and even though he's being faced with very competent knights, he's, he's holding some units back. And he, I think he's, in his mind, attrition is a factor. Yeah, for sure. That's a huge key in siege battles, is knowing when to throw in a unit. And it seems like both these armies seem to be doing a decent job of that. Yeah, it's so a lot of patience and discipline behind the command here. Right, right. I think the biggest mistake, though, that Egypt is making is he's leaving his archers up here to die. I think archers are really key, especially late game of, like, you know, trying to skirmish down your opponent. Yeah, you can, you can throw them in as a meat shield and whatnot, but at least, you know, use your arrows. Right, right. If they're, like, still full of arrows, I mean, that could have potentially, you know, been kills. Now they're full of steel. So. Yeah, now they're full of, yeah. 
full of non-existing. So yeah, it's it's not looking great for Egypt, but they're doing their part to try to hold back England. I think at this point, especially with the French, like really just in the streets. There's even a nice little street battle right here. Look, which oh, it's looks raging right yeah, now. Yeah, it looks really awesome. Um, but as this goes on, I mean, it's there's at this point it's it's red alert and the, me it and the is. right yeah. Yeah, oh, this is our our famed red alert stage. Where yeah. You need to start thinking about what's your next move and how can you can safely move troops back without hanging too many up. You can see the uh, I think those are Trebizond up there getting some really good shots down on the front. Yes, yes. A great use of the walls here, which I'm so glad. You don't know how many times you see players not use the walls when defending. Isn't it, isn't it fascinating that I mean, you could say in the same exact distance how effective the walls are with archers firing in instead of out? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that just yeah. wild? Probably more effective. Way more effective. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, but I still think this is a, a losing battle, especially with the Turks breaking in. So great timing with the Turks and the French uh, going through this one area. But I still think, like, the biggest key here as a defender is to not get cut off. Uh, because that way, as long as you have a path towards the, like, you know, the keep, then, you know, you're going to be able to save those men and, and evacuate them. But if you're cut off on two sides, those men are going to fight to the death and you're probably going to lose more than kill. Yeah, that's one of the biggest uh, pieces to troop management. Right, right. And, and, and you know, really, really being conscientious about uh, reserves. Yeah. So if you don't, because if you don't leave any sort of avenue for your men to fall back, I mean, you're basically saying, well, I'm standing here. And you better outnumber your opponent, or at least outposition them. And it doesn't really look like they're doing that. Yeah, no. I mean, they're definitely holding for now, but it, he's got to get these men out of here. And the fact that the Turks are on these walls right now is a really bad sign because they can easily go through here. And all he has to do is hang them up. Yeah, That's it. yeah. That's you, all he's even to do. with a crappy unit, you just hang them up and you send in more troops. And in Unlike some other games, this game has a thing called unit collision. <laughs> so you can't just run through. And if you do, you're going to pay the price, or if you attempt to. Warhammer, Attila. <laughs> I haven't heard of those. Yeah. Just pretend those don't exist. <laughs> but yeah, the English have uh, started to break through here. Not too hard of a challenge for the English, though it looks like they lost quite a bit here. Lots of red and, yeah, and more, yellow. Yeah, more than we expected. It's probably from the towers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Another reason why you need to hold the walls. Exactly. I mean, you just gotta you gotta make the most out what what you have. And towers, unlimited ammo, so give it a go. And we have a, a nice moment here of the French and English working together, going after the Tabadoria. Awesome flank. That's really. a good unit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it is. But not like this. <laughs> Some Egyptian axemen. It sounds bizarre, but it ended up being really cool. Yeah, no, they're great, but they're not effective being surrounded. And with these Tabadaria, you definitely want to try to get a nice charge, being able to, they're more of a shock troop, so you want to... Exactly. I think the only unit that can really hold its own, especially on the eastern point of being squeezed between multiple units, not a lot of people, a lot of units can say this, are the, um, what are those, uh, Hashashim? Hashashim, yeah. yeah those the, are, like, those guys are like little tanks. Yes, yes. Especially on the walls. I think you said that, right? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're the like wall unit. Yeah. Absolutely. We got a really cool battle scene right here. This is fantastic, seeing all the different colors. And even though, like, the colors of these factions are not super realistic, it, they still have that sense of, like, the colorful banners of the medieval times and how colorful the armies were. Um, yeah, I know it encapsulates whatever they're trying to present. Right. Like, that's what's important. Yeah. You know, we're not going to get too hung up on, oh, well, there's all sorts of different colors and whatnot. Yeah. It just looks good. It looks yeah, it looks great. It's very, you know. And it still looks good. How old is this game? Yeah, it's over 10 years. I think closing into, like, 12 years yeah. this November. Absolutely. So. You see Byzantines, Byzantine boys getting ripped apart here. Yeah. We the Trebizond. We're trying to just fire the block. Yeah, we got this really cool situation where we got a thin line that just broke. Holding back so these uh, Trebizond archers can fire back at the French archers who are just like they're so they feel so safe that they're fully stacked up here just opening fire and shredding those byzantines and they are and the thing about it is i'd i don't know about you but i'd much rather kill 
his infantry than his archers. I I'd rather have those Trevisons up on the wall firing down in the blob than infantry. That's just me. oh right, like yeah. Because th those the French archers are excellent. But I'm not worried about them taking the square. Right, yeah, especially since you're going to have the advantage of this wall. And you can easily put your archers up here and then use that. Like he is here with the Byzantine guard archers, which is a great unit. And I'm glad he's got something kind of covering the retreat. But I think he was just hanging out in this area for too long. Yeah, maybe he was just buying time for Egypt to get more of his men back. That's that true. Yeah, that's definitely true. Which, by the way, he needs to get these guys inside. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing out there. So. Yeah. And those I, aren't bad. I mean, he's got the Tabataria over there. He yeah. Has some of his um, desert, desert archers. archers. Yeah. So who look like, uh, they look like they're conducting traffic uh -oh. with some of the clothes they're wearing. Whoa. Ooh, wow. The noble oh, no, friend. Going, oh. He's going in. He's going in, sort of. It was almost like some kind of honor like yeah he's like wait a second no these are archers they're beneath us yeah <laughs> yeah i think he's trying to go for a much bigger unit here or he's trying to cut off the yeah he might be trying to completely cut them yeah, off yeah he, he, he looks like he's definitely trying to hang and it's off. that see that's smart that's really smart from the attackers that, I, that's a huge key to winning these siege battles is cutting off retreating forces so you have less units to kill that are hiding behind walls exactly and france is mobile He's just all over the field, just trying to take every bit he can. Yeah, I mean, we saw French soldiers in every every part of this fight. They were everywhere on the English side. They were on the the Turkish side. The, they're on their side, obviously. Now, yeah, now they're by the you know getting close to the keep, slowing yeah. down units. And yeah, he's just he's very very um, all about the mobility. It looks like. Yeah, and uh, it seems like he's backing away. He lost a lot of hospitality there, I think, because of. Uh, the the, the tabatari, yeah, the, or you know, possibly some of the spear, but those guys are definitely effective at killing oh, cab as well. Yeah, really good charge by the Turkish bodyguard, killing at least what seems like twenty percent of the unit, maybe even more. Yeah, big chunk. He's got to get them inside. And yeah. The trebuchet. I just saw some rounds fly over the walls. They're kicking off here. Yeah, he saved the trebuchet uh, for the final stand, which I actually really like. Um, it's gonna make for some interesting. Um, defensive plays here well we want to see the defenders sling some stuff back too yeah you know that's that's key and again like we said in the beginning of this battle it's a battle of attrition uh in in saving ammo saving units and supplies is gonna really help you when it matters most and we'll see if these two units of trebuchet can actually hold this this final stand um even if they can't make super super hits psychologically knowing that stuff is coming inbound you don't want to hang around yeah yeah for sure uh, also we've got the egyptian catapult which, which uh yeah now this is a great defensive right unit. right so this is more of like a short range good at getting clusters of troops this is more of a harassment uh artillery piece you know great distance but the accuracy is very poor um, but right now it seems like we're kind of in a phase of like I like to call it the like second phase of bombardment as the um, Allies here or the French English Turkish Alliance continue to bump bum, uh, Bombard these walls down. I think what we're gonna do guys is just go ahead and skim through it and start it back up once the uh, the slaughter begins All right guys uh, welcome back. So it really wasn't too long of a of a break there The English seem to like not want to stop He wants to keep up with the momentum and he's got a couple ladders and I think he's gonna go for this uh, corner here I think he wants to share the load. Yes, the other side was going intense here So he wants to take part and now he's about to go topside with some ladders. That's a really good point the English didn't really he did have some like uh, Egyptian defenders he had to take on, but I think overall his army is the healthiest compared to all the attackers. Um, the Turks too didn't really, uh, they kind of, they took on a huge Byzantine force. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, they, obviously they had support from the French, but uh, right. it seemed like the other side was a bit scant on troops. Here we go, some ladders. Yep, some ladders ready to scale the walls. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I love in Medieval 2. It looks great. It just, I don't know what it is. Like when yeah, I they put the shields over their heads. Yeah. You know, it's just. I hate the ladders in Attila. They're like on wheels. 
kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, it's like what the men should be just, carrying the ladders, the you know? The walls just don't feel like the scale. Like, yeah, you could measure them and say, well, they are tall, but they just don't feel big. Yeah. This, this feels big. Yeah, for sure. So more and more of these troops scale up uh, up here. It looks like the Egyptians making a smart play by getting their desert archers out of there. And I, well, let's, you know, I don't like them giving up this wall because the English are going to easily get their archers up here and just fire down. If you do, it's probably like the worst place for the defenders. Yeah. Because they're just going to fire into their flank. Ooh. Because the main front, the main wall is where a lot of the heat is going to take place. If they have their backs exposed... It's not going to bode well for the troop confidence. Yeah, not at all. And the English also pushing the center center wall. And it's now time for his allies to show up. He pushed a little too aggressive here, in my opinion. Uh, he's making a good move here because he's got no no resistance. Um, but over here... Is he, go is he firing at that wall? Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. He's killed a couple of his own men because of the artillery he has. Where is it? It's really bizarre. Where is that artillery? It's hanging out. Wait, is it way back here? Is this it? Oh my god. Whoa. Wait, no way. Yeah, no, that's him. Is it firing that's over him. the walls? Wow. Well, I would have here. never of of guessed. I would never do this. Yeah, you wouldn't think with how flat they are that has an art. Oh my oh god. Oh yeah, my that's god, him. yep. That's yep. him. So they've only done ten damage there, ten percent. They're all over the walls now. Yes, yes, they're starting to to make some ground here. Um they're actually sending back this unit. I wonder. Oh, because the Byzantines and the Egyptians are sending over some, some so he's reinforcements. He's not giving up. He's not throwing away this side, which is, which is a smart move. I mean, you should at least oppose this sort of incursion. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you just you don't want to just give it to them. You got to make them work for it. And I absolutely love this scene because we've got the infantry or archers, but you know they're fighting close combat. And then on both sides we have archers kind of killing each other. And it just looks so cool. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. I love the use of fire arrows, even though it's not very practical. It's not practical, but it's just, it adds a lot. Yeah. I mean, how do you not look at this and just be like, holy crap, this is just an epic siege. Like, just Medieval 2 has this feeling of genuine, you know, it's just very genuine in the way it, it presents this stuff. It does. It, 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 it feels like you just entered a different time. Ooh, and look at that. That whoa, was whoa. huge. That was his own. Yes, that was mostly his own men there. But yeah, it seems like, a, I think, a trebuchet. Yeah, the trebuchet point blank, relatively speaking for a trebuchet, um, killing these men. And all it took was one hit and breaks about two units. But that other shot was the, for the flaming ones from that bombard. And that right. hit there as well. Which is, right. I, he's going for that tower. That's why it's all over the place. He's oh, to, yeah. He needs to, to get it that. closer. That's the problem. He's got the time. He has the ability. He just yeah. needs to move that thing in. Yeah. The further the further uh, you are, the, the harder it's going to be to hit a small target like this from that distance. A lot of breaking from England. Yeah. I think he just pushed in too quickly. The Turks are now are pushing through. It looks like a breach here. And the Naphetoons are throwing their pots here, uh, which is a great, great destroyer of morale. Uh, and we'll disrupt and their formation. Men in general. Yeah, like, I even mean, if the look. morale doesn't crack. I mean, those guys know how to pop, yeah. pop men. Uh, I love the animations of Naphetoons when they hit troops. They just completely light up, like <laughs> the amount of oil and gasoline or whatever. It's like they poured gasoline out. Like immolation. Yeah, but here comes finally the French uh, forces coming in. I mean, the Turks really have to rely on the French here because of that heavy infantry. Just. They're, they're Spears perfect. Spears just aren't going to cut it. Right, right. You need, you need a solid French sword behind a uh, powerful arm here. Yeah, so the Turks just, you know, French infantry, Turkish, Naphetoons. A pretty nasty combo. Let's see if it's a if it's enough to break through this little last stand. No wonder they broke. I never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you guys see that guy spin? Oh, yeah, have you, you seen that spin? animation? Yeah, the yeah. classic, the classic, like, Look. what is going on? The amount of strength you would need to spin a knight like that. It probably caused confusion. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a lot of troops just clashing. You have archers who seem to possibly be out of ammo who are jumping in as well, just to hold back this swelling French mob. Yeah, I think I think it's time. I mean, this is a really good target for the Egyptian catapult. Exactly. He needs to move those guys up. 
Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, because it's this is the best ideal spot for that artillery. Because once they break through and they're attacking like right here, it's gonna be open field. So they're yeah, gonna you can spread out. Yeah, there it's concentrated. I mean, you could get super hits. Especially how yeah. many do you have? Like two units of catapults or so. Yeah, he has one, I think. But they also oh, have the one. ballista or the um, the trebuchet. Oh, that's true. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm really surprised it's not using the catapult here, but. More and more, it looks like archers, Byzantine guard archers, which are pretty decent in um, in melee. Yeah, especially compared to desert archers. Yeah, desert archers. I mean, they're armored up and ready to go. And I notice he's using standard shot too with the uh, trebuchet, which I would say is pretty smart because it's more accurate. And even if you if you hit your own guys, it's not going to cause as much damage. But at the same time, you kind of lose the potential of just, you know, smacking hundreds of, of knights with a fiery ball of justice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Though, <laughs> so, I mean, we like to go, we, we, you know, from an outside third party oh, here. Whoa. There we go. What, what was I just about to say? We like to watch guys burn. We like, yeah, we burn them all. <laughs> We're mostly impartial. I mean, I'm kind of rooting for, you know, France here, but, you know. Yeah. It's awesome to watch those noble knights just swing the legs out. Yeah. And sweep them with those pole arms. Got one right here. He's going to move in and help his, his ally. He's like, I'm going in for the kill. Oh, well, no, but he gets... So he starts getting attacked, so he blocks like, and yeah. to protect his flanks of his partner. Oh, there. I think he died. Holy mother of God. Oh, oh no, no, he's still he's in it. Still I think he just got hit. This is why... Oh! Nice, over the head strike, and he's out. This is why I love Total War. Just watching... Every once in a while, just watching a single soldier. Oh, there he goes. Darn. Byzantine... Oh, oh but he, he got, gets he revenge. revenge. That's all that matters. Oh, man. It is raining down fire on the French army, and it and seems... those are close from the trebuchets. Well. Yeah, very close. The Turks might have to just start sending in more and more troops... He's got the Ottoman infantry, which is actually more of an archery unit than a melee unit, but they are pretty good in, in melee, so. Yeah, plenty of chain mail on those guys. Shields and swords, they're ready to go in. And the bombard is still cracking off on that side. It doesn't seem to have hit any of the targets it's want. It, you know, the tower's still up, the walls are still up, so who knows what he's shooting at at this point. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to bring down this one, but it's only at 26%. Um, this one's at 37, oh, there, there we go. Tower. And, I mean, it, it seems like the attackers are really starting to run out of troops here. The Byzantine still holding at this wall after... He yeah, he didn't give up the walls. No. That, that was an excellent move. Absolutely. Lots of dead English here. Even a couple who are just, like, in shell shock. I don't know what's going on here. And they're angry at the fact that the rest of their unit left. They're still up Yeah. There. Like, hey, these guys aren't so tough. He's, they're watching them run away, like, all the way. Like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they're just obviously glitched out there, but, you know, enjoying the sights. Exactly. They have plenty to look at. <laughs> so it seems like the attackers are kind of slowing down here. Uh, they have they went in for a big push, but it didn't pay off. And I think that the archers and the, the combo of the, the, cattle, the, you know, the artillery is just too much for them. It held off, and I'm surprisingly those trebuchet trebuchet is close range and put in a lot of work yeah oh yeah Especially considering like how you know range how much range those units actually do have yeah for sure and this is pretty smart from the french he's, he's got his archers pretty close and i think he's trying to take out the um the crew of the the trebuchet so i i think it they actually i mean look how low this crew is 16 men they still have a lot but it seems like the strategy is somewhat working yeah, somewhat. I, I personally shoot for the units like directly to my front and kill those infantry in the way. But, you know, teach his own. Yeah, yeah, because if you can break through the infantry, then you can storm and overwhelm the, the trebuchet. But, exactly. I mean, in terms of reserves for everybody, people are low. People are running on, on low here. I mean, very depleted. Running on empty, Ru food review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is that from? You don't know what that's from? No. Man, dude, our boy. You can just, you know, you you, you don't watch uh, Review Bra? No. All right. Well, Real shout out to Review yeah, Review Bra. Bra. Give us give us a shout out. Yeah. Be great. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, the French are, I think you're right. I think they're, they're using their shots here on the infantry. And now they're going in to fight. Oh, oh that was a good time to move. He chose wow, to yeah. Oh. oh, so one goes long, one's short. These guys are are, are guarded. Yeah. <laughs> they have a guardian yeah, angel. They do have a guardian angel. Uh, but the cav, that's hard to hard to dodge the cav. Yeah, the Allen Light Cav. There aren't there there are seven of them. They should be able to hold just fine. Yeah, for sure. Oh, but they're getting away without killing any of them, which is unfortunate. But are they gonna go for another push here? They're still holding back using their archers, which is smart. They're they're using what they've got in Honestly, that's their advantage at this point, is their archers. Um, yeah, it would have been nice if they secured part of the wall just to get guys on there. Because yeah, you know, I'm surprised they didn't do it here. This is a prime, this is prime real estate right here. They could have used this and hell, at least open it up. I mean, he's yeah, 67 percent, and you know, parts of the other have been damaged as well. I think the Turks might be doing that, but it's hard to tell. But yeah, I, you know, seeing. Tons of English archers up here would just destroy these guys over here. I mean, especially the longbows because they have such great distance. What do what the attackers even have left at this point? Well, I think their strength is right here, obviously, with the, you know, with all mostly archers, though. He's got small pockets of, you know, small groupings of troops here. Also, a, a nice heavy cav, which is actually going in. Oh, oh man. This guy's getting really lucky. Yeah, he is. Especially that Turk could have got taken out with yeah. the bodyguard. I mean, we've seen it like a thousand times. Generals are magnets to to uh, artillery. They are. They're magnets to glory, though, as well. Like, yes, look, look at, at this. Go, yeah. Go charge forward. Now is the time to charge in the infantry. There's still a lot of troops kind of holding the line, though, but the general's just like, no big deal. I'm going in. Yeah, he doesn't seem too phased by this. Now he's going behind. Now, uh, This see. is perfect for a hammer and anvil or yes. something. Yes. But I don't he's, know where he's going. I went in to say hello to the artillery crew and then left. I guess so. That was interesting. I, we might have someone, a double agent, maybe. Yeah. He's like, what you guys, what do you want me to do? Oh, oh, right, right. And then he goes back. Does England have more men? Or Well, um, no. Wow. England. So England went up a wall and died. I guess so. I don't. What happened? I, I, I didn't even I don't see know. it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see it either. I mean, he's got these guys, but they're breaking. I don't know. Is this like are they doing a secret mission or? I thought he had archers at least. Yeah, I thought he had. You know, there had to. I mean, what happened to the uh, all the armored sergeants? And whatnot? Yeah, I know they're gone. Uh, I guess it was when he was scaling the walls. But we do have a nice general battle here. It seems like the bodyguard. Oh yeah, here oh, he is. There he is. He's the big man. Egyptian general going in really not it's not as risky as a defender because you have the infinite morale of the towns of town center so it's not yeah, like so if he does die it's not the end of the world right but it might hurt the outer defense of those walls but the, the combination of the French and the Turks really held too you can see the French general right there right in the mix he's actually closing too with the, some of the bodyguard Oh, and even the enemy general. Might have oh, a general look at him. He's going. Here. Yeah, look at this. They're close. He's backing away, though. He's going up against a noble knight. Oh. Big mistake. Oh. Is he? Oh. Ooh. Well, here we oh, go. Oh, come here on. Go. General versus general. Come on. He's fighting a noble knight right now. Like, oh, oh, the noble, noble knight. Oh. Well, well, yeah. There you have it, folks. Uh, noble knights, man. They're cab killers. You know, they only. They're called noble because they only fight noble, noble In people. The infantry are just so beneath them. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, a general? I guess he's worth my worth status. My yeah. But with the death of a general, again, it's not a huge deal for the defenders, but these Tabaderia could break a little bit easier, if they, especially if they hold out here. So whose position would you want to be in right now? Right now, I definitely want to be the defenders. I think they have the edge. I'd have to say so as well. Yeah. I think if the attackers can somehow break through and overwhelm the trebuchet, then... It could be a different story. Well, the time's ticking against them, too. They have those two towers fully firing, so that's got to be yep. killing stuff this whole time. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's that does not help them. They even got some archers, too. This lone archer. <laughs> this single man. Yeah. How many will he kill? <laughs> oh, he'll kill some wall. Yeah, he'll hit some wall. He's just pretending. He's like, I'll just pretend if I'm fighting, then people won't get mad at me. Exactly. Let's see if this one goes anywhere. 
Take your time. Yeah, no rush. Okay. I like how it's delayed. You see yeah, that? Yeah, it's weird. Like, you let it loose, and then a second Dude. later... Oh, there it is. It's magic. Oh, okay. See, uh, not only the towers, but the trebuchet. I mean, they... they... Well, why are the towers even in there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, were they, were they you can't use them. You them can't or... use them here. Yeah, so... You could use them as a shield. Oh, maybe that was the intention. Though. Yeah. It looks cool. It does look kind of cool. Oh my god, another good hit there. Breaking the Turks. So the Turks are basically testing the line. It seems like it's weird that they're sending in like one, one unit. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. You, you'd think you'd want to overwhelm. I think France was resting up his knights because they've been going at it constantly. There's a big opening here. Can you get around? Okay, now's the time to commit everything. Just send everything. Turks and French. Go. Yep, there we go. There we go, some Turks going in. Nafatoon. Nafatoons, all right, an excellent pick here. It's risky. A, oh, uh, it they, is risky. Are they retreating? Oh, the, oh. What, the French, look at this. We have a unit of French archers who are just getting around. They're behind enemy lines. Well, the, Fr the French are overwhelming the walls right now. Actually, it looks like they're coming in, totally. Yeah, I think... Oh, there goes another wall down, but again, there's no units over on this side. So there, seems, there seems to be like a bizarre like disconnect in timing. Or, yeah. Why now? But this is an opening for the artillery to go for the trebuchet. So, yeah, I get some sniping action. Yeah. We'll see if they can land some hits, or even going after this this archer unit. Especially a guard archer, they can yeah. fight in a lot of different capacity. I mean, the the angles, the shots here is just so cool. You never get tired of medieval two. No, I, I shouldn't say that because I did take a break from it, but, uh, you know. I mean, you need a break from great things. Yeah, you. yeah. Too much of a good thing could be bad, but. Yeah, and that's why we don't constantly eat junk food. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nice sweets. See the French arch is just trying to silence these guys once and for all. Are those the catapults now squeezing off? Yep, yep. So the Egyptians have not used a single shot until a couple seconds ago. So they have full ammo. They've got the high ground. Again, I think it would have been better if they used it when the French were clumped up over there. Um, I think they could have even killed them even quicker. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's kind of a shock that... Uh the attackers didn't recognize hey those guys aren't even here let's go it's yeah. go time yeah for sure now we got the french general with his two bodyguard at this point breaking killing the crew that have killed so many of his men it must be a nice uh, satisfying moment to seek you know that's, get that revenge that's gonna raise troop now yeah yeah a lot yeah. of egyptians put a big back. french banner right here we took right. it Planted. we took it Right yeah. on the carcass of one of these. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we're seeing a resurgence in will from the attackers. Look at this. They're just yeah. flying in now. And not a lot of standing in their way. Yeah, it just seems like they kind of broke through that speed bump. And now they can, uh, you know, start to really rush in and use this open field in the courtyard. Exactly. And now we have flanking Turks. Yeah. I wonder where those Nafatoons are. They've been, uh, maybe he's trying to get them in position and... Because we have lots. Of, oh, oh there, there we go. Speak of the devil. There we go. Now, if he can really get into that clump of men. That's there, yeah, we there, there we go. And there we go. There's round. that break again. Maybe they broke so quickly because of the death of the general. Uh, now but, they have to fall to the square. Yeah. They have really no other. Actually, there's not a lot left. This is a very, very close finish here. I still think it's in the advantage of the defenders. I but don't, I don't know anymore. Where's their... Do they have... Ooh, whoa. Was that friendly fire? Uh, well, they didn't. I don't think they killed anyone, but they took out the trebuchet. But it's kind of overkill at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's unnecessary to fire at. But uh, and from my perspective, it seems like the attackers still have more infantry, like hardcore fighters. Yeah, and more professional. I don't really see any infantry on the defender end here. Yeah, yeah, no. It seems like they've got mostly archers. They do have some uh, dismounted Byzantine lancers, which are pretty decent. Yeah, they're they're all right. But yeah, yeah it, lots of skirmishes. Yeah, I mean, that's about ooh, it. And ooh. then some crewmen from some artillery. We got a bit of a uh, artillery battle here. Just hiding in the the nice field here. Yeah. A gentle slope. They've got to angle it just right to get over the slope and then hit the troops. But uh, yeah. Shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, be just the French. They're still going. The 
French started this fight, and here they are. I know, I know. They're Look at the general. general. General now, he's lost his two bodyguard. The Byzantine going for the artillery. That's a smart move there with the Allen. Definitely, like bro. You have some, a couple of Napatoon. Hopefully, they can get some kills here. Yeah, or, or at least break them. But, oh my god, they wiped out that crew so quickly. Yeah, the Bombard's gone. I was even afraid the General might be at risk, but he's such a tank, he might even hold. Yeah, th uh, that's why another reason I love the older games. How many times have you seen, like, a lone General, you know, like, wreck units? Just taking stuff on. Yeah. Maybe the, the, here go, the Turkic uh, General's riding out to actually challenge the yep. Islands here. Yes. And he's going to tear him up. He makes contact. They're going down. Yeah, he, he, he at least got one there. Allens are down to three, yeah, so... Yeah, they're pretty much... Oh, he's still going in. Yeah, he's not stopping. He's going to go for the archers now. This isn't a bad... I, I have to say, just the strength. The numbers might be on the uh, defender side, maybe a little bit, but the quality is definitely with the attackers. Yeah, for sure. We have the French general right here. He just kind of crept in. Oh, no, never mind. Is that that's, no, that's a Byzantine. That's a Byzantine. Fooled my eye. So he's, he's part of the Allen. He's part of the Allen. We wow. never noticed that. So we got another general battle. Look at this. A 3v3. And wow, the Allen. Whoa. Whoa. The Allens are actually going to town. It's like the, you. <laughs> the lone Turkish uh, bodyguard. He, or, so he just Gen oh, he gets, oh, he gets revenge. Now, this is a 1v1. Okay, Holy now crap. This? Okay. <laughs> now, this is epic. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see. The two generals are like having some dialogue. Yeah, it's like, it's right. over. Yeah, I told you. So Wait, he, actually, this is very iconic. Turkey. Here. Yeah, versus the, the Byzantine. Versus the Byzantine. Who let's will win? see. Will Constantinople be oh. retaken or what are we looking uh, at? Look here? at the bounce of power. It's dead even pretty much. I'd say it's slightly in favor of the defenders. He's leaving though. He better not leave. Oh no, come on. He better not leave. He's like, I must rally my men. He's on a light horse. He's cheating. Turkish generals, yeah. <laughs> Turkish generals just like, screw it too. I'm going to kill your men if you're not going to fight me. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, some more troops, some Napatoons, good use of small units. Ottoman, Ottoman infantry. infantry. Oh, they're going for the general. France is still up in wow, the Wow, he's taking out the, yeah. Wow, good job with these uh, Holy dismounted. Holy crap. Or these archers. This is a close battle. Very, yeah. very close. Here comes the general. Whoa. Oh! Oh, but he breaks the Ottoman infantry. That was a nice little juke there. Yeah. Into the rear. And now, actually, he's going after a dangerous The French unit. general is going in for the general. Well, now, will the French, will the French do the job here? They're exchanging some blows there. Um, he, he gets a couple hits, but it's not enough to kill the... The general, I mean, this is insane. This is quite the finish to a siege battle. Absolutely. You just Ooh. have the singular generals riding right, around yeah. the field. With small pockets of troops. And they're just killing men. I mean, they're just riding around, just slicing men as they go. Yeah, and at this point in the battle, you can't even rely on the balance of power because it's not really taking into account how strong these generals are and how both of the french the french and turkish general could probably kill all these troops on the field if they if they charge they them in them right. right absolutely yeah. absolutely i think the only one that's slightly dangerous is there's a spear unit left right that's gonna be t oh, oh the busy whoa, that was oh yes the the turk one he defeated yes. i wish we would have seen oh that, i know but, i didn't uh, know but he, he takes he, him out he did catch him oh my god the quick general oops is not so quick anymore no now, boy. The Turkish, <laughs> the Turk generals has uh, and taken and out their leadership. Take on this whole unit on his own. Oh yeah, well he might want to charge him in nice. and out, but yeah, <laughs> this is not good. You can't leave him like this. Yeah, in and out is definitely the way Oof. to go. But these guys Jesus. are so weak. He just I mean, took look at this guy. Three. They're so weak compared to him. Oh, my. every one swing is he a kill. He just won't stop. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, you see what we mean? Is to how effective a general can be. He's armored up. He has the money. Oh my <laughs> God! I think I think the I think the attackers could win this with their two generals. I think they I, can. It's kind of insane to think about. This is hilarious. They led all those men in, and now it's just down to them. Yeah, I mean, there's still some French. There's a lot of French yeah, actually. A, yeah, there's actually uh, Why? enough French presence here to get the job. I, you know what? I think the attackers have enough. I think I think you're right because this balance of power is actually I had it backwards. The defenders are the red part. Oh, wow. So the defenders are down to nothing. 
And I think uh, the death of this general right here, who is dueling the Turkish general, which I really regret not showing that. Um, I think that was kind of oh, like the nail in the sad coffin. Laying there. Yeah. The way, the way he looks, but uh, yeah, no, they're gonna clean the house. Yeah, this they're is it. The attackers the take it, which I'm really glad to see because attacking for me, I feel like is uh, is a lot. It can be a lot more challenging. And it's, it's, it seemed like they were going to lose that one with all that artillery, but they were able to push through it. it. I'm telling you, it was the quality of troop and the fact that those catapults just didn't get enough effective fire. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we can see the kills here. And uh, now this was on small scale, so the kills are not super huge. But, I mean, considering it's small scale, the Byzantine Empire, Empire getting 1,000, uh, which definitely he was carrying most of the weight of this defense, now, Egypt is just not a good defensive army. Yeah, they're faction. not. You know, actually, they fare a lot better in attack because of the uh, Nafatuns, the Hashashim. Like, you can use them in a, you know, a much greater fashion, I think. Yeah. You know, defensive-wise, they just don't have the uh, talented troop volume. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you look, at, you look at France here, on the other hand, totally dominating. Lots of kills. Lots of prisoners. You know, they ended up, they ended the fight. Yeah, they had the smallest army too. Yeah, they did. Sure. How did England still have 300 men? Are those just routers? Probably or? routers, yeah. I guess, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's kind of bizarre. It's kind of weird, but here is the results. You can see who got the most. This is the Byzantine Empire, so. 91 by some archers. See, archers yeah. put in work. Archers are key, man. So yeah, that's gonna wrap it up here, guys, for uh, this siege battle. It's a hell of a finish. I really it enjoyed was. that one. I love, I love the generals. By the way, big thank you to Adventurer32. More replays like this, guys. This is like fantastic. We were a little like concerned, or like, oh, small scale. Yeah, that's we weird. we like. I think large scale is I think ideal. Ideal for like gameplay performance and cinematic. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so, but nonetheless, it was a hell of a finish. Really epic strategic fights. Really enjoyed this one. So, thank you, Adventurer. It means a lot, man. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you next time on the battlefield.